Hello everyone and welcome to my DIY workshop. This video is one of three on the topic of marking out woodwork and shows you the tools and techniques required together with some handy tips. The other two videos cover marking out angles and curves. Let's have a quick look at pencils for marking out, starting with the thick chunky carpenter's pencil as used in the trade. It, it's a thicker lead, gives a thicker line, it's less likely to break, but you do need a special sharpener ideally to sharpen it. That's for rough sawn timber. If you're not working on rough sawn timber, you're working on a smooth surface, you can use an ordinary household pencil like that. Because the lead is likely to break more often, I would suggest carrying several spares on the job. There's a double-ended one. And there's a sharpener to suit those pencils. There's a very fine pencil, which I suggest you can use for very fine marking out on a smooth furniture surface. Finally, uh, a rubber. Carry a rubber because it's good to be able to easily rub out the lines that are wrong or lines that will mislead you into accidentally cutting in the wrong place. Here's an essential tool for marking out woodwork. This is a carpenter square and it enables you to draw lines at 90 degrees to an edge. Associated with that is a bevel gauge which is adjustable. You release this uh, tightening nut here and you can set it to any angle you like which enables you to consistently draw preset angles. Here's another tool that would be very important to you if you are dealing with special angles, in other words not 90 degrees and not 45 degrees. It's a protractor which you probably remember from using quite a lot at school. You can see more detail about using these three tools in the next video about drawing and checking angles. Now we come on to measuring tools. Here's an old fashioned folding carpenter's rule. I use it only for rough work because I find it difficult to measure accurately due to the thickness. I much prefer to mark accurately with thin steel rules like this. You've got an exact starting point and you can measure very carefully along the scale. Similar remark applies to these with the exception that it's got this loose end and it's designed for hooking onto the end of your work so that you can take an exact measurement from that edge along the scale or you can push it up against something to measure from that point there along the scale but what about if you're trying to use this rule to measure from an intermediate point there? It's tricky because where do you position the end of this uh, moving piece here? It's much more accurate if you choose an obvious point along the scale, like here, 10 centimetres. Position that exactly on your existing mark. Now. Suppose I want to measure a further 15 centimetres along here. So that's 15 plus the 10 that we've got here. So I go along to there, 25. And effectively I've measured 15 centimetres along from that point to that point. We can check it quickly by just simply doing that. There we are. Likewise, if you want to measure an existing space, do the same again. This time I'm going to start on 20. So I'm on 20 there on my scale. Here it says 35, but it's not 35 from there to there. It's 35 less 20. So that's how to accurately check an existing distance using one of these rules. Now, what do we do if we're working with a long piece of wood or a long board like this and you want to draw a straight line but you haven't got a long straight edge? Well, as long as the piece of wood or the board has got its own 
straight edge there you can simply brace your fingers like this and draw a line like that. Another way to do it is to simply use something like that, it could be a piece of wood actually, and then hold the pencil there and bring the roller along nice and steady and you've got a straight line like that. And again you can go f much further in from the edge. Keep your eye on this part here, make sure that's always 90 degrees. There we are, nice and steady and you get a good straight line. Now I want to come on to which side of the line to cut. Uh, well, wait a minute. First of all, if you've got any stray lines that are not relevant and shouldn't be there, get rid of them. Now then, supposing that that is the exact width that we want. So you have to cut down the outside of the line so that you've got the full amount of material there. A good idea is to put an arrow reminding yourself which side to cut. Same the other end so that if you start cutting at this end of the board on that side of the line when you turn the board round you've got to remember to cut on this side of the line otherwise you'll end up with that piece there being too narrow. Now when marking out hole centres I recommend that you do a long bold cross line like that because it's much easier when you're positioning the drill to start drilling it's much easier to sight down there and to sight across there and judge that the drill is in the exact right place to drill at the point there you've marked. Here's a simple tool you can make yourself to enable you to quickly mark out hole positions in the same place on several components of your project. Take a thin piece of MDF or plywood, make sure your end is square and mark it as the special starting end, measure the position of your holes carefully, drill two millimeter diameter holes and countersink on one face so that the pencil will go right through. When you've checked what you've done and you're ready to go, drop it on the edge of your piece of work or wherever you're marking. We've already got a center line there. Carefully line up the ends Pencil through the hole and jiggle it round to mark the workpiece underneath. And then with the square just line across like that and your job is done. And you can do that repeatedly and you know it's accurate because you set that out in the first place very carefully. Another important aspect of marking out is to uh, mark your component pieces where you are making an assembly such as a simple shelf unit. Here I've marked each shelf the same as A, the sides are the same so those are B and the top is marked top because that's special, that's overhanging at the top. This might look very simple and mundane but it's important in managing your offcuts because you're inevitably going to have offcuts when you've cut these pieces. What you don't want is to be looking to cut another short piece and accidentally use one of these components. If you don't want to put pencil marks on your individual work piece because it's perhaps a nice furniture finish, you can use decorator's masking tape to put labels on like that and then the tape will peel off readily afterwards. Don't be tempted to use an ink pen on these uh, tape labels because the ink could just possibly leach through and stain your workpiece. Now the other thing is um, mark your offcuts so that you know which are your offcuts and which are your proper component pieces. Now here's something different. 
This is a window pole and suppose you want to cut that much off it. There's the pencil line where we want to cut but ideally we need a line all the way around telling us exactly where to cut. There's a simple way of marking the line by using a piece of old birthday card with a nice straight edge which I've marked or similarly a piece of cornflake packet. Wrap it round your pole like this. The edges of the card are in line here meaning that we can draw a nice straight line all the way round pencil against the edge of the card and there we are a nice neat line all the way around that we can cut down. Suppose that we've accidentally cut off the end of the pole that had the pilot hole for the centre joint screw if you're joining two poles together. So we need to remark and drill the centre of the pole. So here's a simple way of finding the centre of that round section. Find a board the thickness of which is roughly half of the diameter of the pole. Lay a pencil dead flat on the board, hold the pole up to it and keep moving the pencil as we rotate the pole to make lots of marks on the end of the pole. And the result is we get a nice neat circle like that and by eye we can easily judge the centre of that small circle. If you would like to watch one of the other videos on marking out woodwork, they're listed on the right side of the screen. Just click on one of the items to watch it now. And if you would like to subscribe to my channel, you can click on the circular avatar in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again very soon.